Hi, my name is Martin and welcome in another Photoshop quick tip tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create wedding pictures effect. Of course, there is no one way to create wedding pictures effect because it depends what style you prefer. Um, so there's a lot of different wedding pictures effect. But I checked a lot of uh, this kind of uh, photos and what is typical for them it's um, the wedding pictures used to be really clean and bright and most of them has uh, this kind of sepia effect so I tried to create something really popular something easy uh, so I hope you really like this tutorial um, and another thing I can say this tutorial is without plugins, uh, so I think it's really for everyone because I know most of people prefer do not using plugins. Um, so I really hope you're gonna like it. Um, but to be honest, the best way to editing your we wedding pictures is using Lightroom or Camera Raw as a plugin uh, for Photoshop. But I think I really got something interesting without plugins. Um, and to be honest, it's really quick effect. As you see, here's my final result of uh, that picture. So right now, I'm gonna delay to all of this, all of those um, layers, and we'll see. So. Here's our picture, of course it's Fistock from DeviantArt, credit are in the description. I don't want to crop that image because uh, it's not our main point here. I just uh, would like to show you color effect. So at first um, we have to make this image a bit brighter. Uh, there is few ways to brighter image, to make your image brighter. You can use exposure, but I think exposure might be a bit, a little bit of destructive, um, especially on the wide uh, wedding skirt. Sorry, I don't know how to say that. Uh, so I prefer to duplicate this layer at first. I change the name of the layer for brighter or bright, just bright, and after that change blend mode to screen. It's a bit uh, less destructive I think, of course right now it's too strong, uh, so change the screen for about 40%, uh, supposed to be okay for me, uh, should be okay for me. Oh, sorry. So after that, next step is go to exposure, as I said before, but I don't want to use exposure to be honest. I just want to take down offset, but just a little bit, something like this. It gives me uh, some contrast, some nice contrast, so I think it might be helpful, but if you don't want to, you can... Uh, just leave this step and next step is curves uh, in curves I would like to add some contrast as well so take it down on the shadow place and take it up a little bit on the highlights and lights area maybe something like this I'm not sure if it's not uh, too darker right now, so really be careful with curves. Because to be honest, curves used to be a a bit destructive for me. Next thing I use is vibrance. Some uh, some of the people um, use saturation, but to be honest, saturation isn't really great for this kind of image. 
uh, for me saturation is too strong and what's most important it's really destructive so I prefer use vibrance in this kind of image and I add vibrance about 50 don't bother it's uh, really not so strong take a look but it gives us uh, it makes our colors a bit richer after vibrance and to be honest it's almost the end of our editing so after vibrance we could use gradient map but if you want to change your color you can use photo filter as well but as I said I prefer to use gradient map right now change blend mode to soft light and opacity about 50% or even 40 to be honest. Take a look with 40 as well uh, at first and as I said it would be nice to use some kind of sepia effect on that image. There's a lot of sepia effect here. If you don't have these effects and if you're using Photoshop CS6 just click this small icon here and after that use photographic tuning. Take a look. After that click a paint or OK and all the photographic tuning effects gonna load to your Photoshop, to your presence. So I have to select my sepia. I think that one is really very nice looking. Maybe maybe that one as well. It's I think that one is a bit better. And 40% works really well. And at the end we have to create our final uh, result on the top as a top layer. So press Shift, Alt, Command and E uh, to create final result if you're using Mac and press Shift Control Alt and E if you're using Windows. Uh, now click right on this layer and convert to Smart Object because we want to add some effect uh, on that layer. After that click Filter and Lens Correction. I think a lot of uh, wedding pictures have this uh, vignette around the picture. So as I said, click custom in lens correction and after that take down vignette. Uh, I take down till minus 100. Of course you could change your midpoint if you want. For me it isn't necessarily. And okay, take a look. That's how our image looks right now. Understand it might be a bit too uh, too large but I think that view uh, behind the model is really nice so that's the reason why I kept that. Uh, I hope you really like this tutorial. As you see everything is non-destructive. We still kept that high resolution uh, so everything look really nice and it's really non-destructive way to create a um, wedding pictures effect. Take a look how our image looked before and how our image looked right now after editing. I think it looks much, much better. I think I've got the point, uh, the point with wedding pictures. Uh, so I hope my viewer uh, wants that kind of uh, effect. So what can I say? Thank you for watching. Leave a comment if you have any question or any opinion as well, as always. And hope to see you in the next Photoshop tutorial. Thank you.